Right then, here we go. Lana Del Rey's new album, Did You Know? There's a tunnel under Ocean Boulevard. It's a long one, an hour, 17 minutes long. It's always a pleasure and an honor to be able to do this in the company of you guys. As always, if you want to watch this uncut, there is a link down in the description to the Patreon. Come and join the party. Uncut Twitch VODs, everything on there. So we've heard these first two tracks already, but I want the album reaction to be complete. So we're going to do them again. So yeah, this is a deeply sad track about her family and extended family, about her uncle who passed away. Do you think about heaven? Heaven. Do you think about me? So many mountains to hide. Such a beautiful track. I only listened to this the one time when I did the reaction because I knew the album was coming and I was obviously going to be listening to the album a lot. Already that main refrain, that main melody and the chorus feels like almost timeless. Like we're gonna hear it a lot. We're probably gonna hear it in TV shows, movies. So many rivers so long. You know, and, and realistically funerals, which is sad to think, but it's true. Yeah, absolutely beautiful track and sets the tone, interestingly, for the album. And we've heard this one, of course, the title track. Did you know that there's a tunnel under Ocean Boulevard? When's it gonna be my turn? When's it gonna be my turn? little piano so gentle So seemingly this reference to this tunnel, this long sealed and forgotten tunnel under Ocean Boulevard, which is not something we really know about here over here in England, is also a reference to just, well, she talks about it, don't forget me. She's perhaps feeling like this long forgotten tunnel and she just wants to, to have her memory live in infinity. It's already feeling like quite a fatalistic album. And I guess that's something that you could kind of pin on all of her music, really. I mean... Got her first album's called Born to Die. Already this record, and we've heard these songs, feels a bit more like, like ruminations on passing time than some of her previous work. Don't forget me. Under ocean Boulevard. Don't forget me. Under it's a phenomenal texture. To the production and engineering, I mean, these are things that we expect, but still, it's worth pointing out. Stars in my eyes, hiking up Griffith, thinking about what you don't really understand. I've got magic in my hand, stars in my eyes. You want some basic. Bitch, go to the Beverly Center and find me. I'm sweet. What you doing with your life? Do you think about it? Do you contemplate where we came from? Lately, we've been making out a lot, not talking about the stuff. I remember. That, that is songwriting. My goodness, that felt like and sounded like a song that's been around for 
I don't know, 70 years. And that's a, a gift and a talent and something that takes a tremendous amount of work and practice to be able to achieve. Not a song to get you out of your chair by any stretch of the imagination and not really a type of sound that I would typically gravitate to, but is different here. The melodic choices, the little shifts from true sort of somberness and reflectiveness to a little bit more punch. Amazing. Slightly different sound for this next song. We know this one. A and W. I haven't done a cartwheel since I was nine. I haven't seen my mother in a long, long time. And I don't be fuck on the water floor. It's not a bra having someone to love me anymore. Like this, I don't know, maybe. I'm just like this. I say I live in Rosemary. And so I'm just waiting for the beat switch. <laughs> These slow moments, which I'm assuming is going to be most of the album, they're very, very captivating. Obviously, a lot of her music kind of sounds like this, but it's almost like she's taken it to another level of of slowness to really almost push push the boundaries of um, of attention span. Like this is a very long song. We've had nearly 20 minutes at this pace. I think all the songwriting has been beautiful. But at the same time, if you go back through a previous work, there's normally something that really sort of makes you sit forward by this point. That hasn't happened really yet on this album. It's almost like a, a, a test of attention. the first time we heard this switch it's like um the after hours track from from the weekend if, that, if you'd heard it for the first time on the album but you know Fascinated to see where the rest of the album goes because we've got a long way to go. This is all new now. Judah Smith interlude. Now I believe Judah Smith is some sort of pastor to the stars. Sounds very Hollywood to me. Does that sound like love? It's a life dominated with lust. And for too long they've been holding up. And finally they just get weak. More of my friends and help me serve the city I live in and not wish it away and hope I can move. So terrifying. Look at the splendor of your skies. You created genius glowing in the heavens. When I gaze, when I gaze at your moon and your stars. This is like sinister, but compelling and truthful and troubling all at the same time. John Baptiste on this one, Candy Necklace. So I guess here the candy necklaces are something and her obsession with them is that it's almost like a sort of fake and hollow gift, not, but not literal gifts. Like the sort of relationship is sort of exciting and sweet and fills you with dopamine. Ultimately, it's hollow and um, there's nothing to it. And then she's acknowledging that in this next verse here. You've been looking pretty restless, dancing like the young and reckless. And she's switched. Restless and reckless there, right? All his candy necklaces. It's 
It's strange. The piano is now getting ahead of the beat, and she got ahead of the piano and it makes it sound sort of unsettling and and immediately quite frantic. Come in very haunting. Candy necklaces. Candy necklaces. Candy necklaces. Candy necklaces. Candy necklaces. I think that song might be amazing. A lot of these songs are going to take time to sit with. And that's the case of slow, melancholy, ruminative, thought-provoking music. But there was something special about that one, I think. I think it's wise that the interludes are separated from the tracks. So if you want to skip, you can. Very unsettling now. Yeah. Very unsettling. It's a weird record, actually. It's a really weird record. It's gone in a strange direction. Kintsugi, I don't know what that means. There's a certain point the body can't come back from. I was there for the third because I couldn't be there for the one who was closest to me. It's just that I don't trust myself with my heart that's how the light shines in that's how the light gets in So, this is an incredible song. So, Kintsugi, I've got on genius for this one because I wanted to, to know exactly what the song was about. Kintsugi is the Japanese art of repairing broken pottery by mending the areas of breakage with lacquer, dusted, or mixed with powder gold, silver, or platinum. As a philosophy, it treats breakage and repair as part of the history of an object rather than something to disguise. So, if you take that and extend it out to this whole song, talking about the loss of family members and how what it has done to her, instead of just repairing as if nothing had ever happened and going on. She's talking about living in a new kind of beautiful state with those, with that breakage sort of on display. And I guess you could double up that on display by by saying that these songs are a part of that. I think that's an absolutely beautiful sentiment. Um, I think it's a beautiful piece of songwriting again. It's an extremely somber record so far. It's difficult to react to, but the reaction is the reaction, like I often say. I guess we just keep going. 
but like what a beautiful sentiment you could argue that this whole record at least so far is an exercise in kids kintsugi by cracking the light gets in so you have to accept the trauma accept the broke break breakingness broke I'm not a songwriter in order to heal magnificent Wow, it's just an absolutely incredible song. So beautiful, so thought-provoking and thoughtful and somber and sad, but yet yeah, beautiful as well. Incredible. When I look back, tracing fingertips over plastic bags, or maybe just get your attention for a minute or two. If I do, will you be there with me, father, sister, brother? Charlie, stop smoking. Caroline, will you be with me? It wasn't my idea, the cocktail of things that twist neurons inside. But without them, I'd die. Crying. in Monaco I couldn't hear what they said on the telephone I do think this album is her is her kintsugi this is her her way of healing from everything that's been happening while also contemplating her own mortality which of course she's done before Strange one, isn't it? It doesn't have a typical song structure at all. Just like a stream of consciousness, like a stream of thought. It's a very intense record. Despite being so beautiful and orchestrated and quiet. Okay, Paris, Texas, featuring SYML. I don't know who that is. Hmm, it's kind of was taken away by that one, to be honest. Right, listen, grandfather, please stand on the shoulders of my father while he's deep sea fishing. Very specific title. Pacific. 
goosebumps, the goosebumps. Come on. It's going to take a lot of listens, but some of the moments, they're all quiet. They're all kind of reserved, I guess. Some amazing, sort of soaring moments of incredible, beautiful songwriting. And because it's so reserved at times, when you get these grander moments, they, they really hit home. And it feels so deeply personal. It feels less like the sort of persona of Lana Del Rey. And then it feels more like that album of Elizabeth Grant. funny to think that this is one of the more lively songs on the album because it's still very somber and slow and kind of melancholy but I think we needed a little bit of well at least percussion if nothing else Amazing ending to the track. Strength to Strength, this album. I don't know. Listen, we've got four tracks to go. I don't know where it's going to sit in comparison to, to Chemtrails, to, to Norman fucking Rockwell, to going all the way back. Um, you know, Ultraviolence, Born to Die, etc. I really don't know on this first listen. Am I going to spin this that much? I mean, it's absolutely stunning. The songwriting is stunning. The arrangements, the mood, the tone, the message and messages. But obviously, it's not that immediate as well. So... It's really interesting where we're, I don't know yet, but I'm going to spend a lot of time with it. I know that much. For her ninth studio album to be at this level of um, confidence and to shift her sound ever so slightly, it's very much her, but to move away from this kind of like faded Americana persona that has been so much of her music and yet this much more real, authentic. I never found her music inauthentic, but I felt like she was adopting a persona to create mood which is fine, and, and and I love that. But here it just feels like we've been let in, in a different way. I guess we're, that she's let the light in, I guess. This is a simple song, gonna write it for a friend. My shirt is inside out, I'm messy with the pen. He met Margaret on a rooftop, she was wearing white. And he was like, I might be in trouble. <laughs> yeah. Baby, if your love is in trouble. Okay, this is about um, Jack Antonoff's fiance, Margaret Qualley. Qualley, when that first came out of my mouth, it sounded weird. Anyway. When you know, you know, it kind of makes me laugh. Running down that path when your good is gone. And that's your answer. The answer is no. Yeah, I run Um, yeah, it's a, a pretty song, but not my favourite. Not my favourite on the album at all. Three songs to go. Very long project. Skip a rope in the bayou, bayou. Slip softly into rain. 
chip inside your mind <laughs> Lately I've been thinking about how things used to be You wanna be sadder Tunes? It's like a. It's like almost trap beat and auto tune coming in. Very strange. Must have almost felt like bonus tracks. You know, like Let the Light In was the the true final song. <laughs> it's a very different end to this end to this record. Changed so much, it's kind of throwing me through a loop a little bit. Yeah, this is a really interesting track, though. I don't know what I feel about this song or the previous song. really not sure about the end of this album you know I don't dislike these songs but they're so different they're definitely less emotionally resonant they don't seem to fit in with the theme of the album in the same way they're obviously sonically very different keen to know your thoughts in the comments on these obviously they have a slight connection sonically to A&W but apart from that no but kind of individually they're cool as well I'm not sure no oh, well no a full a full callback now Ah, oh, XVB, that's what VB is, okay. Okay. Super felt like bonus tracks. Really keen to get your thoughts on the end of the album and of course the album overall. I think it's a body of work with some absolutely incredible songwriting on it. Um, Kintsugi may be my standout track, but we've got to go through it again plenty of times to really lose yourself in it. But some unusual moments, obviously the interludes are what they are, and then a completely different sonic finale, um, almost making me feel like Grandfather, Please Stand on the Shoulders of My Father, which is an outrageously good track, is the final track because everything else feels a bit different. But still, for a night studio album to be this accomplished, to be this open, honest, raw, authentic, and perfectly poised is quite something and once again i just want to extend my thanks to all you guys all the lana fans for your support over the years we're still here we're still doing this thing and that is largely in part because of you if you made it this far and you haven't subscribed to the channel that probably means you also haven't watched many of the lana del rey reactions on the channel as well so please do check another one of those out and subscribe of course it's uncut on the patreon and i'll catch you all very soon peace <laughs>